We have so much to talk so about. Many. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're going to have trouble keeping us on task. Well, Tina and I went to school together. We did. At the, in those days, she was known as Tina Rutnick. And we went to Dartmouth. We're here we are at Dartmouth College. And we studied Chinese together. So. Oh, see, already better than what I can What remember. is Jung Wen's Oh, Chinese stop! Shirt. She was Lu always. Tian -na. Uh, oh, what was your Chinese oh, name? Oh, Wang Ning. Wang Ning. Hey, Wang Ning. Yeah. Washer Lutiana. Washer uh, uh, Bujudao. I say that really well. Yeah. Bujudao, that means I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to hear how you're feeling right now today about what's happening in the election. It's a pretty crazy moment yeah. in time. I don't think everyone fully appreciates how amazing and important it is that we could possibly elect the first woman president. I think right. that is such an amazing, defining landmark in our history as a country. And I'm not sure our country's even quite absorbing that. I've been feeling that way too. I kind of get this bummed out feeling like, man, it's our first female candidate and it has to look like this. My social security payroll contribution will go up, as will Donald's, assuming he can't figure out how to get out of it. Uh, but what we want to do is to replenish the Such Social a Security nasty Trust woman. Fund. It's that classic thing of, you know, I thought it was going to be different. And yet, I think we had to slam into it. The women's rights in this country, every, every right that we've ever, that anyone has ever had in this country, uh, has been Too hard, hard won. It was in 1920 that women, we passed the 19th Amendment, we finally had the right to vote. I've been traveling around my state, going around and celebrating 100 years of suffrage has been so eye-opening. These women, I mean, I, I was just on Long Island, which I didn't even know. They, they did a march to fight for suffrage from Long Island to Albany in the winter. No. They marched literally oh by gosh. themselves. And then they had another march down to Washington. They walked, these ladies, and they had these big, huge capes and hats. With and, their hats. And, and it was cold. It was cold. It was, and you know I'm staying in New York weather. It's cold. Oh but these women did it anyway because they were fighting for freedom and this right to be heard. What I love about your story is when you were on Friday Night Lights, you know, your real first breakthrough opportunity and the demands you made. You right. wanted to have a voice. I did the movie Friday Night Lights with Peter Berg and in the movie my, my role was cut to almost nothing. They made my character mute. So then Pete Berg, who created the, did the movie, decided to do a TV show. So he called me and he said, hey, I want you to play the coach's wife again. And I, I said, no, I don't want to, you know, spend year after year just being sort of a sideline character to a coach on a football show. And thank you anyway. I appreciate it. And he really kept at, he kept at me about it. And he was like, this is our chance. This is our chance to give these women a voice. We started working on the show, and I really, every step of the way, was like, wait, what's happening with these women? What's happening with these women? It became a really great opportunity and uh, just platform yeah, to, to, create to, be those a, to be a strong woman. In the same way you really drew out these voices for your character, I really want to draw out women's voices in America. Our life experiences are so different from our male mm -hmm. colleagues. Yeah. The things we live, the things we see, the things that we think are most important. Yeah. If you asked if the top 10 things you care most about are on Washington's agenda, none of those votes are scheduled. They're probably never gonna be scheduled because they're not the priorities of the overwhelmingly male leadership that this country has. I think what you bring to these roles is an authenticity and a pushback on script writers when they write a line or a scene that just doesn't ring true to you. Yeah. And that I think is important because it allows your viewers and the people who support you to say, I, I can be myself, I can own my own ambition, I can own my own frailty. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And that's, I think that's, that's the thing. I think that is the message, is that what you are is enough. And actually what you are is essential mm -hmm. to your family, to your community, to the world around you. And what you are can create something great.